take me. Thanks, thanks for that. Sorry. Email, anyway. That's okay. Okay. Hello, Wei and Ian. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Pleasure. Excellent, excellent. So, so I, I wanted to get a, an opportunity to talk to both of you guys. I understand that you have a partnership. You're both um, outsourcer and client of outsourcer. And we're doing a whole feature at the moment of all about outsourcing and looking at best practices. And what's really nice about you guys is that because you work together, we would love to get some questions to you on how you work together and what makes a relationship work really well. So if you don't mind, Ian, can I ask a few questions of you first, please? Yeah, sure, okay. absolutely. So, so how long have you both worked together, the two companies? Boy, we've worked together for, gosh, I want to say about almost four years now. Um, um, yeah, I, I discovered World Connection when I was uh, a speaker for an ICMI conference, and, and we were in the market for a new partner. Um, we, we actually at Quicken call our, we, we don't reference um, our outsourcers as outsourcers. We, we call them partners at Quicken. And so uh, we, we, we uh, discovered, like I mentioned, we discovered World Connection at, at a conference. And, and from there, we, we started doing a pilot. Excellent. So, so how did you go about finding the organization in the first place? How did you do? Did you meet them face to face at this event, or did you, you know, were you um, introduced because you said to somebody, "I'm looking at for a new outsourcing partner," or did you do some online research? I'm just trying to get a bit of background. Uh, yeah, uh, honestly, I you know I spoke to my boss, and um, he said, "Look, when you're at this conference, walk around the vendor area." And, See who you find anybody you know who, who may be interesting. When I came across a World Connection table, I they were truly a startup back then. Okay. Um, and um, and you know I think for for me and for the Quicken organization, we were looking for a partner who was hungry for our business and um, really have a customer-centric mindset. Okay. So th those were some of the criteria that you, you set out in terms of your evaluation for your, your next partner? That, that was, yeah, that was the foundational criteria. Absolutely. And do you recall at that time as well, Ian, approximately how many other organizations you were talking to as potential partners? Yeah, you know, it was more informal, to, to be honest, Raj. Uh, I would say I probably talked to, at that time, maybe 15 other organizations. Okay. Um, whether formally or informally. Awesome. Well, you, uh, well you, you guys did well. Obviously, you, you know, four years on, that's a good, healthy relationship going for you guys. Yeah. Um, so just in terms of what what you guys currently do together in... in uh, what What do... What do World Connection offer you in terms of a service these days? Is it call handling? Do they handle chat, email? What sort of things do they do for you? Yeah, they, they do um, mostly phone calls and chat. They do um, some back office work for us. Um, and and uh, But they also help us really analyze also our, our customer pain points. And, and they work directly with our uh, business development team, our, our product development team, mm -hmm. and our product managers to help make the products better for Quicken. So we don't just solely use the the agents with World Connection as just call handling. Um, they truly are a part of making our product better. And so we, we owe them quite a bit. They, who, who best to help our product development team than the people who are closest to our customers, and that's our agents. Absolutely. That, that's actually a really interesting point that you make because in so many cases where you've got outsourcers and, and clients, clients don't fully utilize the, the intelligence they're getting from the, the call handlers. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's all credit to you guys that you feed that through to your product development team as well. So that's, that's really nice to hear. Um, going on to just 
in broad terms, how, how do you measure or how do you know that uh, Wei and her team are delivering a really good service to you guys? Yeah, quite simply, their KPIs, their key performance indicators for Quicken mm -hmm. is really custom focused around customer-centric metrics. So we measure our performance and, and, and well connection performance through TMPS, through direct customer surveys that they get. And and, um, and uh, that's really the, the major criteria that we use on determining their success. Okay. A, a lot of organizations, when they outsource, um, they put in place lots of other metrics as well, like, you know, the, uh, the average duration of a call and, you know, completion mm -hmm. rates or, or things like that. Um, so how, how do you guys balance in, ge in general terms? How do you balance the, the customer satisfaction versus the overall cost of using an outsourced provider and make sure that, you know, you're, you're getting a good overall value from that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, from when we take a look at our data, our, our data eh, tells us quite a bit, right? And, and we have to be true to our customers for quick and number one, first and foremost, uh, average handle time doesn't mean anything if you're not helping the customer when they call in uh -huh. versus um, So we don't manage by average handle time, though we do take a look at, you know, are our agents being efficient? And if we notice that average handle time is going up, there's a reason for that. Either there's a change in call mix and, and the agents need some level of up training, um, which we'll, we'll provide to them, or there's something else, maybe a new tool was introduced or uh, something else that may skew those numbers to be a little higher, that where we as a leadership team take ownership of AHT, we don't push that on to the agent. And so it's our responsibility as leaders to understand why that metric is moving. Again, we don't really talk about AHP, we talk about efficiency. Right. And our age is efficient. We actually have quite a bit of data that we work with Lay and her team on to really showcase that um, the shorter amount of time that we're effectively able to help a customer actually helps us increase TMPS. And, and, and you would think that that would actually be counterintuitive, that if we took more time with the customers, you know, um, uh, the agent tried to uh, uh, razzle-dazzle the customer with their knowledge and, and uh, offer other things for Quicken, that that may help push the NPS higher. It just doesn't. Customers want to get on with the agent, have their situation resolved, and then move on. And, and know that we're here for them um, without a long wait time in the future whenever they need us. Interesting. That's, that, that's really good. Good to hear that. And how often do you personally or how, how often do you and your team get involved in, you know, sitting down with agents or getting feedback with them? What, what's the sort of strategy there for the, the, the way that you engage with, the, uh, with World Connection and, and their team? Yeah. Uh, so daily. Number one, I meet with Wei's team, Wei and her team daily. We have daily huddles. We, we listen to calls daily, but every quarter, um, myself and, and my vice president, my boss, we, we go out to um, Guatemala and, and Boise and, and sit with agents um, and, and listen to the calls that they take, do focus groups. But aside from that, at Quicken, it's also very important for us to not just you know, sit with agents and, and have them do as we say. Mm -hmm. When I get to the site, I actually take calls with the agents so they can see that, one, I know the product and I, I'm willing to speak to a customer regardless of my title. Mm -hmm. and, and, and two, I understand the pain that they're facing when they talk to customers. At, at Quicken, everybody takes contacts from our CEO down. Uh, and that's just something we do. And at World Connection, it, it's something they do as well. Mm, that's, that's really good. Just just um, for everyone's benefit who might be watching this, Quicken, I, I, I have an impression of, you know, the products and services that you guys do. But just for everyone's benefit, would you just quickly give us a, you know, top level, what is Quicken all about as a brand or product? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So Quicken's been around for 30 years, over 30 years. 
We, we used to be a part of Intuit. Actually, Quicken was the product that founded Intuit, which is the makers of TurboTax and QuickBooks. Um, about four years ago, four and a half years ago, we, we broke away from Intuit, and, and we're now Quicken Incorporated. We make personal finance software. So software where customers can um, manage their bank accounts, investment accounts. We have Quicken Home and Business. Um, we've also introduced this year a new product called Simplify, um, uh, which, which is entirely web-based and, and is focused for, for a younger demographic who's starting out and, and managing their finances better. And, and that's where you know, World Connection helps us um, with the customer support, not only for Quicken, our Quicken product line, but also our Simplify product line, which they help us with. Excellent. Thank, thank you for that. Um, Wei, just, just um, th thank you for answering some questions. I, I, I want to ask um, Wei a couple of questions. What do, you look like, what do you look for when you work with clients? It sounds like there's a lot of things that Ian and his team are doing right, from, uh, and I've spent a lot of time in outsourcing myself, but what, what do you typically look for when you start engaging with a, a, a new client, for example? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it isn't necessarily, you know, every business that we're going after or that we want. So we want to do our due diligence to make sure that there's kind of a good fit, both um, culturally and professionally on both sides. And so as, as we look at clients, we're looking at folks that, you know, one, uh, are really looking for kind of that, that two-way relationship and partnership. So it's not just a, you know, we're going to hire you to answer calls and stick to KPIs because we're, we're more than that. And so we definitely want to show our value. The other piece is, you know, where Quicken came on board, um, they were extremely communicative. They were uh, very hands-on, um, very transparent, and definitely showed very quickly that they were willing to work with us and, and learn with us as well. And so I think there was a lot of really good synergies between the two teams, and, and we work really well daily. And so, you know, times aren't always good, but we also know that we can depend on Ian and his team to give us good, honest feedback, but also to kind of work through the solutions. And they, they understand. They understand certain scenarios or certain uh, situations that are controllable and not controllable. And then we go from there with, um, you know, trying to, to resolve things. Excellent. So do, do you feel your team who are on this account, they actually feel they're working for Quicken or for World Connection? Oh, they definitely feel they work for Quicken. Okay. So I, I think, you know, Quicken does a really good job in terms of branding. We have a lot of branding on site. And, you know, Ian is, is incredibly generous when it comes to, you know, whether he's on site and talking and working with them and having lunch with them or, or sending them tchotchkes and stuff. So they definitely have a, a strong affinity towards the Quicken brand. They're very proud of working for Quicken. And, and, and they want to continue to not only make world connection better, but really make um, both organizations successful. Absolutely. Now, I, I know from my experience, I spent six years in the outsourcing industry. That's where I learned to, a lot about the industry and working with clients and campaigns and strategies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, Ian is, a, I would say, one of the rarer clients out there, you know, who's got a vested interest in making sure this is a win-win partnership for everybody. I, I, and I'm sure you have as well, Way worked with some clients who, are always trying to pin you down on cost, on you know meeting certain service deliveries, uh, standards, mm -hmm. performance. Um, what would you what would your message be to 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 organisations out there who who are really looking for a true partnership? Who maybe they've chopped and changed over the years to different outsourcers. They're looking for a true partnership. Where what what else can they do to to make sure that they find the right partner? and then build on that relationship to make sure it's a really strong one like the one you have today. Ian, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Look, I, for, for, for us, it's easy. You know, as we mentioned, it's about a cultural fit. Right. And as our culture evolves here at Quicken, um, the World Connection culture also evolves. I, I think, you know, it, it is, all about being involved and rolling up your sleeves. Mm -hmm. Having an outsourced partner doesn't make your job easier. It just makes your job different. You still, as a client, have to be involved in your business. You have to know who's managing your account with the partner and make sure that there's this um, level of transparency 
transparency, as Wei mentioned, that that both leadership teams have. Because for for me as a client, I can't help World Connection, help our customers, if I don't know exactly what's going on. And so I, I would say, you know, from a client perspective and, and to all the other clients that are listening, your vendor managers have to roll up their sleeves. They have to get involved and, and they should know the business inside and out, just like the outsource partner. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah, and I would say from, you know, definitely from from the outsourcing piece of it, um, I mean, there's a lot of lessons that we kind of learn along the way. And it is, one, you, you have to be able to kind of put egos aside because we all have our certain kind of core competencies and we've been in this industry for so many years and we know a lot about our own business. But you also have to be open-minded to saying, yeah, I may be, you know, an expert at our Quicken brand, but there's so many things on both sides that we may not know because, you know, markets are changing, consumer taste and um, requirements are changing all the time. And so together, I think what what made this a really good partnership is the fact that we are both, you know, we both collaborate and learn together. Mm -hmm. And and we use a lot of time together to really kind of brainstorm on things and help both organizations continue to evolve and mature. You know, um, Ian, I, I think you were with several outsourcing partners before, right? Yeah, quite a few, yep. Okay, and so because we were young, because we were hungry, we had obviously a lot of vested interest to make sure that we were different from other BPOs. And as we continue our relationship and and have seen kind of different evolutions or milestones within our our account, um, you know, Quicken has now entrusted their business to where we're their sole provider. And, and we don't take that lightly. And so that's just a testament in terms of the, the trust um, that Ian has within our team. And it goes to show, you know, the tremendous collaboration and work, daily work that it takes to make sure that this thing succeeds on both sides. And, and I, I completely agree with why. I mean, look, the, the whole ego thing, she's absolutely right. I, there are times when I'll, I'll bring something up to Wayne and she'll say, Ian, you're being ridiculous. You know, right. <laughs> take a step back, you know, breathe for a second. Let, let's figure something out and then we'll, we'll get back to you. Yeah. Um, and and I, I truly value that. Um, I, I, I'm, as I evolve in my own career, I, you know, you would think, you know, the older you get, the wiser you get and the smarter you get. I think I, I I don't become smarter as I evolve. I become wiser and realize that there are other people who probably have better ideas than I do, and I need to leverage that. Yeah. And 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 way helps me. I think in in my career, she she brings a wealth of knowledge and experience from I think way what over twenty plus years of outsourcing, mm-hmm. right? And and and, yeah. and so do I. We're able to balance that together, our experiences. To, to help our teams work to, to a mutual goal that we both have, which is making our customers successful. Here at Quicken, we realize, like, look, the, the more successful we are with our customers, the more they stick with us, the more we're able to get new users using our products, the more agents we can hire um, to, to help support our products. Way and her team know that, knows that. And um, and we walk hand in hand, or I should probably say arm in arm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, these days, elbow to elbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not that close. We're close, but not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So it, it sounds like, you know, one of the success factors behind your relationship is that there's a very much an open and honest dialogue. Um, you accept criticism, feedback, you know, uh, constructive criticism, feedback. Um, you're both in it together to make it work for both of you. It's not, you know, it's, it's definitely a win-win relationship for sure. Yeah, it, that's not to say it's not stressful at times. I mean, even recently we're, we're in a very busy time, mm-hmm. but, you know, I, I feel confident knowing that Wayne and her team have as much of a vested interest in making quick and successful as me and my team. And, and that is, you know, I, I've I, I've had many outsource partners in the past, um, 
I would say, you know, one of, with World Connection for Quicken, this is one of the biggest um, contracts that Quicken has, um, and and one of the longest term contracts that Quicken has with World Connection, be, because of the great work that they've done for us. Just on that point as well, if you don't mind me asking, in, and, and, I, and I, I'm not after any particular names or anything, because that's not um, not appropriate. But what I'd like to do is just to get from your from you maybe some of the reasons why some of your past relationships with outsourcers hasn't worked as well. Um, mm -hmm. Can you share some, maybe some examples, some insights? And again, no names, please, but just some insights. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, first and foremost, executive sponsorship. Um, if if we uh, if I didn't, if myself or my organization didn't feel like this executives with the organizations that we were working with in the past didn't have the same vested interest or or care like we have for our business, mm -hmm. it just wasn't going to work. It, with any outsource partner, it starts from the top down in, in any organization, actually, right? And so if the leaders don't care, it's hard for the, for the middle management or the agents to care. Yep. Um, that that's that's number one. Uh, number two, it's just you know I think for for us it's also about um, Quicken and personal finance here in the U.S. It, it's it can be complex, right? It, it's not an easy thing to, to learn. I think you know going into the right geographic locations, whether that's in the U.S., near shore, out offshore. It is something you also have to consider. Um, just going off of price, um, you know, it, it's just not a long-term solution. But I think eventually, you know, it, it can have a detriment to customer experience. So you want to pick the right geographic location with the right agents to to support your product uh, and, and get you know really focus on the metrics that you want. Um, of, of course, you know, budgets come into play, but, um, but uh, overall, our first litmus test is, you know, our customers first. And we always put our customers in front of mind, it, even picking a, a, a partner and, and whatever it is that we do. Um, I, actually, our first value of Quicken is customers first. And so we... As we mentioned, we have a lot of branding in the call center and in their call center all over the walls is, is the Quicken values. And we love it when our agents refer to themselves as they work for Quicken, yeah. even though we know that they work for World Connection and World Connection Manage as well. But they're part of our extended family. Excellent. That's really good. And, and how are things now that, you know, we've got this um, work from home model? Is the things still working out pretty good? Is that some new challenges, no doubt? Yeah, it, you know, believe it or not, I gotta say, you know, it was a challenging assumption. We we were all put into a place almost overnight on what do we do, mm. and with World Connections helping guidance, they they quickly determine the plan. Have all agents be able to work from home while while maintaining our customers' privacy and security, being completely front of mind. Um, we were able to do that with over 300 agents. Um, we even had training classes that, that you know, were trained from home um, during this period of time. Our, our performance is just as good as when it was at the site. Um, productivity is actually better because the agents don't have an excuse to not be at work on time <laughs> as much as they did before. <laughs> Interesting. And, and, and honestly, we're, um, we're, we're fascinated with, with the results that we're seeing. Excellent, excellent. But I bet, I bet you miss actually going and meeting them in person at this moment in time, going to Guatemala or to, to Boise and so yeah, you, it's, it's like I told way. I, I love my family, but you know, <laughs> so, I'm so used to traveling. A little separation sometimes isn't so bad. I do miss the team. Yeah, I'm in Guatemala. We're in Guatemala. We're also in Boise, Idaho, and and, and um, 
I, 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 I miss the team. Seeing them on video is not the same as being there. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And, and the last question for you um, both is, where do you s potentially see this relationship or partnership evolving over the next few years? And I'm saying few years, okay, Way. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, I, I would say you never know. I mean, you know, Quicken's business model, we, because we interact with Ian and his team so much, they're very good about sharing um, their outlooks and their plans and their strategies with us. And so depending on kind of directionally where Quicken heads, you know, as they continue to kind of figure that out and diversify and, and expand, you know, we're very much a part of kind of those discussion, those planning. So I think to continue to actively work in collaboration with them and, and to see what other kind of value propositions that we can continue to deliver to Quicken and really kind of continue to kind of push the bar in the envelope on really what kind of the typical outsourcing partner can really do if you have the right client on board and the right mindsets on both sides. And I, I truly believe that we really can can be kind of forward thinking on many fronts and that's what gets me excited about this continued relationship. That's really good, thank you. Thank you. Anything to add on that, Ian? I, I think way, way so, said it better than I did. Excellent. Yeah, and excellent. I, I did it that. Excellent. I, I, I want to thank you both for your time. Um, really do. Thank you very much for your time and for for investing um, that with us today. And also, you know, for sharing some of the fantastic things that you guys are doing. It's 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 really nice to hear stories like this. I used to work with some organizations who were, were just like you, Ian, very open, very um, keen on customer service. And then you get the other extreme where they just wanted you to handle a certain number of calls. This is the cost. This is the call duration. Don't go above it. Otherwise, you'll get beaten up. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's sometimes hard being an outsourcer. So I've seen both sides of it, and I'm sure you have as well. Um, but it's, you know, real credit to what you're doing. And, and uh, I'm sure Wei and her team are absolutely delighted to work with you for years to come. So thank you both for your time. Really, really good to talk to you both. And we'll see you, hopefully see you very shortly when we get back traveling. Great. Yeah. Sounds good. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Take cool. care. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.